CBS Sunday movie. It's been six long years since her breakdown. Welcome home, Mommy. She's a stranger to her husband. I need to trust you again. An outcast to her family. She doesn't belong in this house. A victim of a terrifying past that her own housekeeper won't let her forget. I asked you not to interfere. We do not have secrets in this house. Tell me, Louise. I want to know. Don't you talk to me about mothers, what you did to those two babies. Lindsay Wagner, Memories Never Die, next. You got that confidence. You got that style. You got that winning look. And oh, with a smile, oh, with a smile. And look at the you only Avon can bring all the hot colors that are right for you, right to you. So no wonder you look the way you look. You took the world out, you and Avon, and look how good you look now. Look how good you look now. Hey, Mom, what to Anita about watering my plants. I'd appreciate it if you could remind her. She's almost as bad as I am in the forgetfulness department. Six years of Freud and pharmaceuticals and I still can't do eyes. And you think I'm healthy. You are. Here, here, let me take that. Oh, it's not very heavy. I really would like to have something to hold on to. That bad, huh? How can I be ready to go home if I feel this scared? You've been ready for a year. Why don't you be my friend, not my doctor, and tell me to stay? <laughs> I am your friend. Go home. I feel like I'm leaving home. If you need to talk, pick up a phone. O'Hare. We should have met her in Los Angeles. She's probably lost and wandering around crying. Let's not go borrowing trouble at today's interest rates. <laughs> should have told that to my brother. Talk about trouble. I am so damned annoyed at him for bringing her here at a time like this. She is still his wife. Well, they should have gotten a divorce years ago. And if you'd help me talk to Hattie then, we wouldn't have to be standing here right now. Don't you remember me? Rita. Oh, hi. Hello, hi. Joanne. Hello, Everett. <laughs> hey, don't you look terrific? So do you. Well, a little less hair, maybe, but, well, you, you know what they say about bald men and virility. Everett, get her back. Yeah. Oh, there's only one. It's, it's this one here. Can we go straight to the hospital? Oh, sure. Uh, Howdy's doing real fine. Doctor says he's making good progress. Good progress, my foot. He's getting well so fast the nurses travel in pairs for protection. <laughs> it's the, uh, the, the ghost station wagon uh, across the street. She didn't even recognize me. Well, it's been a long time. But she recognized you. If 
planted trees? Oh, yeah. Things are changing around town about as fast as Rita changes the color of her hair. <laughs> sure. Sure. Why didn't I think of that? I went blonde. That's why she didn't know me. That's not the reason. <clears throat> I had electric shock treatment. Oh, that. Howdy told us. Oh, you wouldn't believe how it tore him up to see you suffering. But that was five or six years ago. The um, treatments wiped out parts of my memory. Some things I remember, others I don't. Maybe that's a blessing. Anywho, don't you worry. We're all going to make allowances. And I've asked Louise to be sure that the children don't do anything to upset their mommy while she's here visiting. That really wasn't necessary, Rita. I'm not a loaded gun. Make sure the coast is clear. <laughs> I'd like to meet his doctor first. Hey, look, if you're worried about how you act, how do you just put on a big smile? He'll do the rest. Everett, don't you do it too, please. Do what? Patronize me. I'm nervous, but I'm otherwise fairly competent. I'm sorry. I'm probably as nervous as you are. Okay. Hey, uh, Larry. This is uh, Howdy's wife, Joanne. Joanne, Dr. Larry Quintero. How do you Hi. do? I'll answer all those questions in those eyes. I'm a real doctor. I went to a real medical school. I know what I'm doing. Thank you. Um, how is my husband? Well, he's recovering well. No complications. My biggest problem is convincing him he's a coronary patient. Same old macho. I'd like to see him, may I? Sure. Room 107 down the hall to the left. All right, Eric. Hey, I'll wait. So that's the missing Mrs. Tilford. What do you think? Very attractive. You know what I mean. The four o'clock GYN meeting has been canceled. I swear those were her exact words. I am not a loaded gun. Where's Everett? Waiting for you. Why didn't he come in? It's a hint. Does a bedpan have to fall on you? <laughs> isn't that awful? He's really awful, isn't he? <laughs> All right, well, we'll be waiting out there uh, whenever you're ready to go. Rita, close the door. You look great. Thank you. Am I going to have to get up and drag these tubes over there? You feel good. Tired? Oh, jet lag. Yeah. Now I can sympathize when you visit me. Neither of us has to visit again. I met your doctor today. He told me you're doing just fine. Yeah? Your doctor told me the same thing about you. Should I believe him? Bobby, why am I here? The kids need you. Please. She seems very competent, and the kids surely must like her. She's been around here for a long time. She's a housekeeper. They don't even know me. You're still their mother. Maybe we shouldn't talk about this right now. Both of us are going to get upset, and I don't think that would be good for either one of us. Everett and Rita want me to make out a will, naming them as the kids' guardians. You know, in case I get... I don't know, by a truck or something. <laughs> uh, I don't want to have to do that, not when they have a mother around. Howdy, I'm not around. You're not going to get hit by any truck? Honey, look around you. Now, this was for real. It is for real. And 
you are their mother. It's a word, Howard. Sean's too young to hardly have a memory of me, and Kathy's must be nightmares. Even if they're not, where do I come to taking care of anybody? I've had people taking care of me for six years. Do you want my sister to be raising our kids? Honey, you got to walk out of this hospital just as good as new. Maybe. Maybe as good as new, but not the same man. You know, it took every ounce of courage that I could muster just to get on that plane, knowing I was going to have to see those kids. And now you're telling me that they need me. How much more terrified do you think I can get? Honey, all I want you to do is just open the door for them just a little bit. Hmm? See what happens. Get settled in, we'll have a nice, serious talk. Okay, thank you for the escort. No, I'll get your bag. No, it's okay. I think. Thank you. Hello, everyone. Oh, Louise. Oh, Louise. Do you remember Louise? Of course, I remember Louise. Oh, no, this is too. Here, let me take that. Just bring one back. Well, she's only here for a visit, for gosh sakes. <laughs> uh, but Everett and I won't come in. You can manage everything, can't you? Don't worry about a thing. And we'll be home tonight, so uh, if you need anything, we can manage quite nicely. Thank you. Bye. Bye. When Mr. Tilford asked me to stay on here permanently, I suggested we could make things a lot more cheery. You must admit, all this old mahogany got awfully dreary. Mm. It's funny, in all my years of therapy, I never once thought to blame the woodwork for my depression. Blamed everything else, but not the woodwork. Please don't feel you have to make light of your suffering. Laughing helps, Louise. New drapes, too. We've tried our best to give the children a normal, all-American house to grow up in. I see that. They're not loaded. Now, we do not permit loaded guns in this house. Well, I see Rita called you from the hospital. Only to say you were on your way. Mm-hmm. He's grown so tall. Ah, you stop right there, young man, and march right back upstairs and put on that nice clean shirt. What nice clean shirt? The one I laid out on your bed. It doesn't matter, Louise. Sean, you heard me. March! I like to pick out my own shirts. What's so important about a shirt? Oh, he's... Going through that awful stage of challenging adult authority, I can't let him get away with any infractions. Of course not. That music must be Kathy. Oh. Oh, no, let's not interrupt her, no. Oh, don't be silly. Kathy, dear, guess who's come home at long last? Hello, Kathy. Hello. Is that all you're going to say? 
I've got six more minutes to practice. Oh, I think we can make an exception today. Now, why don't you show your mother up to her room while I get dinner on the table? The guest room. Your father's? No. Kathy. She doesn't belong in there. Kathy. She doesn't belong in this house. Kathy, come back here and apologize. Kathy! Kathy! It's okay, Louise. Let her cool off. Oh, there's just no excuse for such behavior. After all, you are her mother. That may be excuse enough. Hi. Hi, Sean. Do you want to see my rabbits? Sure. I'm afraid there's no time for that now. Dinner's at six sharp. I've got to feed him anyway. Sean, I told you, dinner's at six sharp. Sean! <sighs> Mrs. Tilford, I, I certainly don't want you getting the wrong impression. They're wonderful children, really. Polite, obedient. I, I wouldn't want you thinking otherwise. It's all right, Louise. No, I'd, I'd simply want you to understand that they're really not to blame. There's so many bad influences on children nowadays. Television, public schools, peer pressure, general permissiveness. It undermines the discipline they get in the home. I do understand, Louise. I, I, mean, I just have to bear down all the harder, even though it might look overly strict to an outsider. Could we just drop it, please? Listen to me, <laughs> rattling on. You must be exhausted after all that traveling. Yes. Why don't you take a nice hot bath, and I'll bring you up a supper tray. All start fresh in the morning. All right, that'll be best. Just leave everything to me. asked me to bring this. That's Daddy's bathrobe. I didn't pack one. Kathy, is it really such a big deal, me sleeping in here? I sure didn't pack much. I wasn't planning on staying very long, only until your father's out of the woods. Lots of pills. Well, it was just a precaution. I never know what I might need. Kathy, would you like to sit down here and talk to me for a minute, please? Your supper is going to get cold. Please? Still draw, huh? Yes, go ahead and look if you like. You probably wouldn't remember, but uh, you used to be my very favorite model. I could draw you by the hours. I had you in pigtails and ribbons and everything. Who's this guy? That's um, Cedric. He's one of the patients at the clinic. They all are in this book. They're creepy. You must have copied this one from a rock magazine. It's Brucey Flagg from the Flying Colors. No, he was at the clinic for a while. He was going through a drug rehab program, but remember, I, I sent you some uh, albums and, and an autographed poster for your 13th birthday. No, you didn't. I never got them. Well, I know I sent them. It's probably your shrink's fault. It's probably censored mail, like in a prison. Probably. Do you like the sketch? Weird eyes. <laughs> yes, eyes are my problem. You're very astute. Well, I've got some homework to do. This is Friday, isn't it? I like to get it over with. Louise said this would be a good time for me to apologize. 
and say, welcome home, Mommy. So, I apologize. Welcome home, Mommy. Now, was that so difficult? Yes. Welcome home, Mommy. Morning. Good morning. I hope you like French toast. Trees must not become a habit, Louise. I'm not an invalid. Of course you're not. But when you weren't down for breakfast by 7, I said to myself, I just bet her tummy is still on Chicago time. I'd rather eat downstairs with the kids. I'm afraid it's too late for that. They've eaten and gone already. It's Saturday morning, you know. It's playtime. Now, how's this? Sunny and nice. Oh, what a pity you've made up the bed. Louise, I, I'll make you a deal. I won't act like a guest if you don't act like a servant. Mrs. Tilford, I am not a servant. I am a governess. And what I meant was that I have decided to move you into the guest room. I'm sure you won't mind after suffering on Mr. Tilford's mattress. I didn't suffer at all. This mattress and I happen to be old friends. But you'll be much more comfortable in the guest room. That way you won't have to accommodate yourself to Mr. Tilford's things. Well, I've, I've done that before, too. Louise. Louise, stop it. Stop it. I'm staying in this room. You don't have to do that. I was simply thinking of your comfort. Please don't make up the bed. I'll come back and do it later. Louise, if I offended you, I'm sorry. It doesn't matter to me where I sleep, and I, I don't really think it matters to you. So that leaves Kathy. I won't be pushed around by a tantrum. Please try to understand what that poor child is going through emotionally. She's always thought her father's the man who hung the moon in the sky. And then this happened. He's never been sick a day in his life, let alone hospitalized. I know that, but please let me work things out with Kathy. I can understand she doesn't like me very much, so you don't have to keep making excuses for her behavior. What on earth? She's nauseating. Well, at least it's girls he's interested in. Are you sure you want to do that? This is Sean's room. Mrs. Tilford, you do not have to remind me that it is important to respect a child's privacy, but he gave up that right by sneaking pornography into this house. I think you're overreacting a bit, don't you? The boy is only nine years old. Are you telling me that you condone that kind I'm of thing? I'm not behavior? condoning anything, but the fact that he is only nine years old makes me wonder why he's interested in that kind of a magazine. I just think it's worth a discussion. You do not discuss sex with a nine-year-old. Well, when? 13, 15, 21. Whenever it is decent. I'm going to go eat my breakfast because things tend to get cold around here very quickly. This is Tilford. I feel it is only right that I speak up when it concerns the children. You have your ways of dealing with children, Louise, and I have if mine. If that is meant as a criticism, I'm afraid I can't accept it. I have had six years' experience running this house and raising Kathy and Sean. And that includes the authority Mr. Tilford has given me to make rules. I and realize set all you've done for my children, Louise. I realize that. Then trust me to know what's best. And please don't interfere.
horse crazy. Well, you know, your father and I used to ride a lot. I'm sorry. About what? Louise told us to be careful about using words like crazy. Why don't you show me your rabbits? Where are your rabbits? They're over here. How many do you have? <clears throat> 17 today. Oh, you mean last time you looked? Yeah. One of those are going to have babies tomorrow. You sure about that? Oh, yeah. A rabbit's gestation period is 30 days. And I can practice the date I breed them. Besides, she's already pulling these hairs out of her chest. They do that to make this sort of nest for the litter. Look at this one. The coat on it's so pretty. She's just beautiful. Um, that's the buck. Oh. Excuse me, sir. What's his name? Superman. Of course. What else? I better warn you that Louise found your girly magazines. Oh, good. Was she mad? Oh, uh, very. Oh, good. I guess it's not such a big deal then, huh? No. You see, she's always searching through my room. And then if she finds anything she doesn't like, she throws it away. Like what? Like my Spider-Man comics, my frog skeleton. So I found these girly magazines in Uncle Everett's trash. She was really mad, huh? Yeah. I like your rabbits. I like them a lot. Thanks. You know, you don't seem so crazy. Oh, well, thank you. Did anybody ever tell you what was wrong with me? Louise always says to ask Dad. And he said that you had some kind of breakdown. Now, one day you get better and come home. But Kathy says that you're only going to stay a while, and then you're going back to Chicago. Is that true? Well, I do have some unfinished business back there. Yes, but... Uh, why don't we just take it a, a day at a time, okay? Yes, sure I am. I guess I'm just still a little tired from the trip. And I suppose if I'm going to get in town to see your father, I'd better get a move on. Thank you for the rabbit tour. Just plain craziness. Yeah, how much energy does it take to sign a check? It takes energy to run a business. You haven't got any to spare. What's the matter? Don't you trust me with your power of attorney? Well, you're a lawyer. You're not a businessman, and this is a personal business. Now, look at this. Look at this. McCormick is overcharging for seed at least $100. Now, you tell him to bring his price in line or he doesn't get a check. And don't let him sweet talk you, because he'll steal your wallet while you're looking at his mouth. Hello, Joanne. Put mine on the wires. You moved your office? No, I'm just signing a few checks here. Well, you talk to him, he won't listen to me. I'm finished, see? I'm putting it away right now. All done. Now, do I get a kiss hello? Ah, uh, wrong. Okay, folks, everybody out. Time for a little trip to Never Never Land. Oh, no. Do you have any pain? Just her. This is just to quiet him down. He's been a bad boy this morning. No, I have not. You were out of bed against doctor's orders. Hey, look, I tried to hold out as long as I could. You guys wouldn't answer the buzzer. No getting out of bed till after your test on Monday. What test? Angiocardiography. Please, just give me five minutes and you can come right back. And take that thing with you. Hey, you. I don't want to see you again. You, come back here. And you, turn over. 
did you know about this test? Uh, uh, Larry told me yesterday. It's not a big deal. It wasn't worth me knowing. Yeah, but I asked you not to patronize me. What do you call this? Excuse me, I'd like to speak with Dr. Quintero, please. The procedure's no fun, but I think it's necessary. What we do is... Yes, yes I know. You, you inject the dye right into the bloodstream, and then you take x-rays of the heart action. Hey, that's very good. <laughs> well, when you spend as much time in a hospital as I have, you learn an awful lot about medicine. The thing that I'm wondering about is if we shouldn't transfer him to an L.A. hospital. You mean one of those big teaching jobs? Sure. But if you're worried about my abilities in doing this test, don't. I'm not going to do it. We've got a very good radiologist coming out from UCLA. He'll do it. Now, if uh, the test reveals occlusion and he needs surgery, we'll transfer him anyway. I owe you an apology. I'm sorry. Don't apologize. People underestimate me all the time. Well, I know that feeling. I bet. Can I ask you a question? Mm. Why Chicago? There's so many good hospitals close to home. Well, I was in one of those for two years after my first depression. Two years? There must have been some depression. They thought so, too. After they ran out of new chemicals to try on me, they zapped me with electric shock. Did you try suicide? Not then. Uh, they sent me home. And it took me about a month to completely fall apart. I went into the back. We have a trailer out in the back. I went in there, turned on the gas, and I woke up in a padded room at County General. And that's where my mother stepped in. She was a pretty tough cookie. She was paying most of the bills at the time, so Hattie didn't have a lot of choice, and I was certainly in no condition to be fighting that battle. She lived in Chicago, so they put me in the Solander Clinic. What do you do there? Are you writing a book? <laughs> I'm just a curious guy. My wife calls it my social disease. Well, I take courses. I am a professional course taker. <laughs> in medicine, I've taken uh, CPR, first aid, uh, holistics, acupuncture. In literature, I'm really big on the, on the Bronte sisters. And cooking, art, and anthropology. I even took a course in video games. <laughs> Doesn't leave you much time to be hospitalized, does it? rabbits, right? First thing. Yeah. Kathy played the clarinet for you? Sort of. <laughs> She's getting better. That streak must come from your side of the family. Sure as hell no musicians in mine. Mother was pretty good. God, Joe, I'm glad you're here. I always believed you'd come back, you know. I had a lot of people telling me that was never going to happen. And I know we had our bad times to blame myself for them. But... Listen, why don't, why don't you get some sleep now? Oh, uh, you know, I know I got a snoop full of sedatives, and I feel kind of loose and relaxed. But what I'm telling you is the God's honest truth. There's never been a woman in the world that meant anything to me but you. I'm gonna be 40 years old. And I've been lying here with a lot of time to think. I want you to come back. I want us to be a family again. Sister Celeste, dial Hi, Daddy. My mugs. <laughs> Hey, all right. They unhooked you from the machine. Yeah. She gonna say hello to somebody else here? Hi, Joanne. Hey, now, whoa, hold it. I don't want you calling your mother by her first name. 
Especially not if we're going to be a family again. She's only visiting. She's going back to Chicago. Not if I can help it. You said you were going to go away once he was well. Kathy, he's ill and heavily sedated. Do you want me to start an argument in there? I don't want you to stay. That isn't going to be our decision. You had us worried. You left the hospital over two hours ago. Well, I just had a little shopping to do. Dinner will be ready in 15 minutes. Thank you. Come in. Hi. Oh, hi. Your dad sent you his love. And, um... I got something for you here. I just took a chance you didn't have this one. I don't. This is great. Thanks. You're welcome. I'll, I'll see you at dinner, okay? I can't have dinner. Why? Louise is punishing me for those girly magazines. Did you talk to Sean about those magazines? I certainly did. And did he tell you that it was just a joke and he wasn't doing anything sneaky he expected you to find them? What difference does that make? It was an awful thing to do. It was a joke. I don't find anything amusing in that kind of behavior. Well, fine, then punish him, but not like this. Would you rather I strap him? Of course not. But denying a meal is a lousy way to punish a child. It's cruel and it's... Cruel? My father would have taken me to the woodshed and strapped me till I was raw. That was cruel. Now, I have been taking care of children since I was 10 years old. And the way I do things has been quite effective all these years. Mr. Tilford certainly hasn't complained. Excuse me. Out of it, Joanne. talk to you. I know you can hear me, Kathy. Open the door. What's all this racket? Kathy, unlock this door. Really, Mrs. Tilford, we don't have locked doors in this house. Was I playing too loud? What do you know about this? If you just tell me what's wrong, then... Louise, will you stay out of it? This is between Kathy and me. We do not have secrets in this house. Fine. Then somebody tell me what happened to my medication. There isn't a single pill left. See, it's empty. It's gone. Surely you're not accusing Kathy. Huh? Well, maybe they were empty when you got here. Aunt Rita told me you sort of forget things. Well, what about that, Louise? You're going to tell me that you didn't check them out when you were cleaning up my room? Kathy, you never tell me lies. I never said I didn't do it. Why? Did you think that not having the medication would, would force me to go back to Chicago or, or freak out? You know, I can refill this tomorrow. Kathy, I am terribly ashamed of you. I don't see how you can blame me, Louise. I only did what you said you'd do if you ever found any pills or pot or junk. I flushed them down the toilet. And you can't make me say I'm sorry because I'm not. 
Kathy, don't you do... No, you mustn't. Look, that kid and I have some things to straighten out. And you think you're going to do that now in your state of mind? Yes, this is she. On your call to Chicago, Dr. Hilburn is out of town till Monday. There is a forwarding number in New York. Shall I place the call? Uh, no. That's okay, thank you. I'll call back. Thank you. Again for the hug. You up? Your tummy growling? Come here. Wait a minute. Come on. Come here. Come on. Come on. Come on, Dad. Go sit down. Over chicken, you like it cold? Sure. What's going on here? I'm feeding my son. Sean, go to bed. Sean, you stay right there. I told you I'm feeding my son, and that's exactly what I'm going to do. Mrs. Tilford, I asked you not to interfere. Don't you interfere with me. My phone calls are private. You have no business listening in. How can you? Don't even try and tell me it wasn't you. Kathy's in her room, and there isn't an extension there. I think you're overwrought. Damn right I'm overwrought. I don't like my phone calls being monitored. You want some coleslaw with this, honey? Some leftover from dinner. You're frightening him. I am not frightening him. Am I frightening you, Sean? Now, why don't you just go back to bed, okay? Go back there and relax. I'm not going to destroy your kitchen or my son. You're making a mess. Of course I'm making a mess. I don't know where anything is. I suppose that makes this your kitchen, huh? Squatters' rights. Possession is nine tenths of the law. You think that goes for kids too? For... Yes. I'm sorry. I'll get it. It's all right. I'm not going to attack anybody. Ah, Here, I'll take care of that. Sean, thing. go to bed. I can do. I can do this. you, honey. I don't understand you one little bit. You are behaving as though I were trying to hurt you. You're my baby brother. I only want what's best for you and the kids. Then back off. I backed off 15 years ago when you married her. And even then, I could tell she was different. You remember, Everett? Oh, it's clothes she wore in her arty ways. She was like some flower child from San Francisco. 
But she's a beautiful girl. I didn't say she wasn't a beautiful girl. Patty's always gone out with beautiful girls. Patty, she didn't fit in. Not in this town, and not in this family. And her mother. Well, you'd think she was the Queen of England. Rita, do you want me to get out of this bed and throw you out of the room? You are getting him overexcited. He does not need that. Nothing personal here. <laughs> if Joanne was well... She is well. No, she's not. The sooner you look at this realistically, the better off everybody's gonna be. Especially the kid. Howdy. You know how Rita and I feel about those kids. It, they're the children we never had. God forbid anything should happen to you, but... Where will they be? Howdy. Please don't be mad at us. You've always been strong. All your life. Please. Be strong one more time. Send her back. Good morning. Hello, Joanne. Everett and I will wait outside so you two can be alone. Hi, Joe. Is there something I said? You look tired, is that? my bed? No, it's my head. I had a terrible night last night. Yeah. Louise called. Why didn't you tell me you had a rough reception from Kathy? Because you were all doped up and very happy in your fantasy, and I did not want to spoil that. I suppose she told you everything about last night. Mm-hmm. I'm sorry. I didn't want you to hear all that. Howdy, you asked me to come here because you said you needed me, and, uh, it just isn't working out. I mean, I'm, I'm only making things worse for you. I think I should go back to Chicago. What I said yesterday, and I remember every word of it, you are the only woman I have ever, ever cared about, and I do want you back. I can't. I, I, I don't even know how I feel about you. I used to have a lot of anger. I, I know that, but that's all gone. I just don't know what's replaced it. Stay here and find out. I'm a misfit, Howdy. I feel totally alienated. What about Sean? You feel alienated from Sean? That's not fair. Yeah, I know. But if it's good with Sean, it can be good with Kathy now. She's older. She, uh, she needs more time. She hasn't had an awful lot of that from you. Give her some. I'll, I'll stay for a little bit longer. I'll try. You don't have to worry about me anymore. As soon as Howdy's on his feet, I'm going back to Chicago. Joanne, I'm sorry. It's all right, Everett. It's nothing personal. And I really don't want Howdy to know anything about this. I will tell him when I feel he can handle it. She's a very, very strong lady. One might even call her a tough cookie. Remind you of anyone? Mm. <laughs> you 
are an astute son of a gun, aren't you? Yes. Was your day? My doe had a litter. Wonderful. How many? Six. Good. And are they all healthy? Well, maybe that's why everybody around here is so happy today. Did you have a big breakfast? Humongous. I'll bet you did. Aunt Rita says that you're going back to Chicago soon. How soon? <sighs> well, I... now I know why certain people were so happy. I guess I will be going as soon as your father comes home. We could write to each other, you know, a lot. We, we've never done that before. Would that be all right with you? I have to go check on my rabbits now. spend a lot of wonderful hours in this room. And I thought by now you'd be using it for something else. Dad likes it this way. But Louise Zoo is complaining that you can smell turpentine. Dad says he likes the smell. Kathy used to have that in her room, but she just put it in here the other day. Do you still paint? Yes, I do. It's, it's a little different now. When I got really sick, Paintings got a little gruesome, but they're getting better. It's just the eyes now. See these eyes? When I am back to normal, I will be able to do those eyes again. Are you still sick? Well, they tell me it's all in my head and that I'm perfectly normal, so. So then you wouldn't try to hurt yourself again, would you? Aunt Rita says that's why you went to the hospital, because you tried to hurt yourself. Don't you remember? Some of it, I don't remember a lot. I guess I don't want to. Kind of hurts. Well, I have to go to bed now. Good night. Good night. Do I call you mother or mom? Um, what do you prefer? Ma. Mom it is. Good night, Mom. Hey, Joe. How do you know? Stoned again, huh? <laughs> <laughs> uh, did you meet my doctor? Sure. Hi. Hi. How's he behaving? Scared stiff. 
<laughs> oh, um, my doctor here tells me that this procedure could be very dangerous, so we better make this a good goodbye. Yes, it's a truth, Larry. Tell her. It's really dangerous. See? You're crazy. <laughs> I keep telling you that. I'll see you inside. Yeah. to uh, get rid of my studio. It's important to you. You really did believe I was coming back, didn't you? Always. Okay. I've gone through four of them already. Why is it taking so long? He hasn't even been in there an hour yet. Just relax. It, it, it's, it's not this procedure you have to worry about. It's how those x-rays read. We should have been here before he went in. I told you we were going to be late. But no, you had to stop for gas. The car doesn't run without gas, Rita. Everett, I know that, but you could have filled it up last night. Hmm? Did he say anything before he went in? Yes, he said, would you please give my love to my sister, Rita? Now, will you settle down? You are making me crazy. Now, now, Joanne, don't you get nervous now. Everything's going to be fine. <laughs> hey, look who's here. Oh, well, it's Louise. Hello, Louise. Hello, everybody. How's Mr. Tilford? They're still working on him. Should be coming out soon. Well, I've brought these fresh from his very own garden. Oh, they're lovely. Aren't they lovely, Joanne? Oh, this was uh, delivered to the house. Oh, isn't that nice? Who's it from? Ooh, what is that? It's eucalyptus. Is that somebody's idea of a joke? They're from Howdy. Why would he do that? He proposed to me under a eucalyptus tree. Huh. His arteries are clean as a whistle. No surgery required. <sighs> when do we take him home? Uh, two weeks, maybe three. It depends on his recovery. He's still a coronary patient, and he still needs plenty of rest. His birthday's in three weeks. Can we get him home before then? Well, hopefully. Oh, wonderful. Oh, it'll be so nice to have him home for his birthday. Won't that be nice, Louise? Yes. Okay, I'm give you another chance. <laughs> That's what I said. Uh -huh. Ow! Getting up. <laughs> yeah, a lot of fun. Hi, Kathy. Look what Mom bought us. Terrific. Oh, I'm getting away, I'm getting away. I was just one. <laughs> Uh, Kathy, you want to come take my place? Kathy, I thought you wanted me to teach you to bake a marble cake. Uh, try a lighter shade. That's a little bright. A peach would be nice. Is there something wrong about this? Louise said I can't wear lipstick until I'm 16. Well, what does your father say? 
He says whatever Louise says. You won't tell her, will you? No. What did she say about lip gloss? Is that disallowed, too? She never said anything about lip gloss. Well, good. Why don't we get you some of that, and you can wear it on special occasions. Okay? Your father loved to ski. In fact, I can't even get down a bunny hill. He's probably the world's worst athlete. So when we'd go to the Sierras, he would ski, and I would just walk in the forest. Well, sometimes I'd sketch. We go up to Big Bear sometimes. I've skied there with Dad. We used to go to Big Bear a lot, and Arrowhead, too, in the, in the summertime. What we'd do is we'd hook up the trailer to the truck. Oh, you're probably too young to remember, but you loved that trailer, boy. In the summer, when it was really hot here in the house, we'd pretend like we were camping, and we'd go out and sleep in the trailer. You... You're late. Sorry. Kathy, we're going to play Space Killer after dinner. Do you want to play? Um... You could play with Sean if you like. I have some letters I have to write anyway. Okay. Excuse me, young lady. What are you wearing? Pardon me? You heard me. On your lips. What are you wearing? Lip gloss. What were you told about makeup? Louise, it's only lip gloss. This is between Kathy and me. No, it's not. I bought it for her. you don't mind my saying so, I really resent your coming here on a temporary basis and disrupting this household. Well, as a matter of fact, I do mind you saying so. If my stay here was not temporary, would, would my actions meet with your approval? That idea scares the hell out of you, doesn't it? I would prefer if you didn't swear in front of the children. And I would prefer that you stop giving me parenting lessons. I'm sorry, I've forgotten my place. While you're here, I will take my meals in the kitchen. Louise, don't! Kathy? I'm sorry about this. I'm dragging you down here. <laughs> First on a Sunday, now at night. You could have called the pharmacy. Now, well, you've got the three weeks of tranquilizers in less than two. You want to talk about it? Have you talked to your shrink in Chicago? I don't want to do that. I feel like I'm making little steps forward. I mean, they're hardly steps at all, but at least it's forward. Chicago's back that way. Have you talked to Howdy? Well, no. You of all people shouldn't be asking me that question. You think he needs this kind of stress? You think he think he needs to know that there's times when I still feel like I'm falling apart? When? When? When I see that trailer. That's when. When, when, when I even think about it. When? Pressure! Confrontation! Disappointment. My daughter is turning into a little version of Louise. I mean, I can understand her. Oh, feeling rejected by me, being disappointed in me, being frightened and being angry, but it's worse than that. It's like there was this little part of me in her somewhere, and she took a knife and she just cut it out, and she buried it in the deepest, darkest cave she could find. You know, I started out wanting to win her over for how he say, because he wanted it so badly, and now I feel I know it's just me who wants to win her over so badly. 
Have you tried telling her the truth? I don't even know what the real truth is. Does anybody? How about telling your truth? Sean, I volunteered for this. Come on, get in. That's your boyfriend? Just a friend. Oh. Doesn't Louise allow boyfriends either? I'm sorry, Kathy. That wasn't fair. Louise has done a good job with you kids. You're healthy and bright, well-groomed, sometimes even well-mannered. Oh, come on, that was just a joke. Not a very good one, I guess. Could we go somewhere and talk? Just you and me? I'm supposed to groom the horses. What, well, couldn't it wait? We haven't had a chance to talk. What about? Us? Me? What I've been doing? Um, what I did? I really have to take care of the horses. They need brushing and... Kathy, this to... needs to be taken care of, too. Those horses aren't going to die from matted hair. Would you like a soda? I'm not really thirsty. Well, maybe I'll change your mind. You got any suggestions? I want to go home. What if I just pulled over here and parked? We could, uh... We could just walk, okay? No, I want to go home. No, Kathy, don't. I know what you did. I no. know you don't. Kathy? Kathy? Good thing the cop owed me a favor, otherwise she'd be sitting in the lockup. Anybody hurt? No. A couple hundred dollars to the cruiser. Wagon's fine. I'm telling you, Howdy, it is starting again, that whole craziness no. with her. Yes, she has got Louise about ready to well, pack it Louise. in. I'm telling you, if the woman wasn't so crazy about your kid, she'd quit. Joanne is disrupting the entire house. Well, look, Louise is just used to having her own way now. She's overreacting. Really? Well, Joanne slapped Kathy across the face today. Is that Louise overreacting? I'm not going to let you do this. You were going to let me out of here in a week anyway. Look, I'm climbing the walls here. Home is worse. I got my own bed, my own room, and that's where I want to be. I've got a damn good idea what's going on in that house, and that's the last place I want Larry, you to be. Larry, look. For the first time in six years, I have a chance. A hope of getting my family together. Now, I am not going to just lie in a bed away from everything and watch it all fall apart. Now, if you won't discharge me, I'll sign whatever papers I have to sign to get you off the hook, and I'm going. I'm sorry I hit you. It wasn't you, Kathy. Hate is an awfully strong word, and that's what I was striking. I guess maybe that's just the kind of person that I am. I, I hit when I'm, when I'm angry, and I hug when I'm happy. Fortunately, I, I hug a lot more than I hit.
my father was like that. And uh, well, I really thank God for that because my mother was, was just the opposite. You're awful lucky, too, because your dad's a hugger. And uh, you got an awful lot of that when you were little from both of us. I can't believe you've forgotten it all. I don't know what your father told you ab about what happened to me. I don't want to hear about it. But I'm going to tell you what I remember. I'm going to tell you because I love you. If I didn't, it wouldn't make any difference what you think, but it does make a difference. I do love you, honey. And I did very, very much. You and Sean and your father. And I know all about shutting people out, too, Kathy. I know every trick in the book about, about running away. You see, when my father died, I was left with a mother who thought children were like porcelain dolls. You, you dress them and you groom them and, and you put them on display. And I ran away from that. And I met your father. He was, uh, he was handsome and, and strong and, and funny. And I fell very much in love. And I ended up here. But I was a fish out of water. I, uh, I tried the country clubs and, and the literary society and the, your Aunt Rita's social teas. I even tried your father's drinking buddies, but that wasn't me. So I ran away from that, too. I had you. And then I had Sean. And the closer I got to you kids, the farther away I got from the town, from the Tilfords, and from your father. My world just kept getting smaller and smaller. Your poor dad didn't know what to do with me. So he found a life without me. I was very angry with your father at the time. So I guess I wanted to hurt him. And, and sometimes I would drink too much and I would drive too fast. Everybody was hurting. I just didn't want to live anymore. Kathy? Mr. Tilford's coming home. Rita just called. Well, he wasn't supposed to be coming home until next week. Well, he must be doing better than anyone realized. great news, isn't it? What are you doing? Well, your father's going to need his bed, so I'm moving into the guest room. Can I help? Of course. He's coming! All right. Home again, home again. Yeah. Jiggity jig jig. <laughs> no, don't take that. Howdy, howdy, howdy let Ever get that. i got it. Hey, hiya, Yogi. Oh, Sean, for goodness sake, you must weigh a ton. He's not strong enough for that. It's okay, Rita. Dad! Hey, Mike. Oh. How you doing? Oh. I missed you. Where's your mom? She's upstairs getting packed. She's moving into the guest room. Oh, that's good news. I heard that. You need your rest. Let's see if we can go find her, huh? But it is so good to have you home again. Thank you, Louise. Your bed is waiting for you. I've already changed the sheets. And I've started dinner. Your favorite. Pan-fried steak and corn fritters. <laughs> oh, will you be staying for dinner? For dinner like that, you bet your life. What do you want to do, Howdy? You want to sit down here for a while? No, uh, uh, I think I'll just go upstairs and lie down for a few minutes. You, um, want me to help you up the stairs? Look, Everett, if you're going to treat me like an invalid, I'll just check back into the hospital. Look, kids, uh, can you give me a 
a couple of minutes alone with your mother, and then we can talk, okay? Okay? Thank you. Hey, Uncle Ed. Yeah. You want to see my new space ski? Yeah. <laughs> Isn't it just wonderful to have him home again? Yes. Howdy, what are you doing? Well, I was trying to seduce my wife. What are you doing home? Oh, I got better. They kicked me out. Will you come off it? I talked to Contero. Just tell me the truth. How are things going? They're not. I'm going back to Chicago tomorrow. It's my home, Howdy. Got my apartment there. Yeah, I've seen your apartment. It's not home. It's where you hide. I've tried with Kathy. Time. That is granite. Look, I'll talk to her. No, you can't talk to her from me. It's between Kathy and me. Well, what about you and me, huh? Now, you know how I feel about you. How do you feel about me? I will always love you, Howdy. Even when I was angry with you, I loved you. Joe, that counts for something, doesn't it? Oh, yes, it counts for, for something. It counts for a lot. But I can't live with you. Even if Kathy does come around. I'm, I'm, I'm still not sure that, that down inside of me, I, I actually have the courage that I need to trust you again. Sean tonight. Kathy isn't going to care. Do me a favor, huh? Go to bed. leaving in, in the morning. Guess you don't care, huh? First rate. They've got football and basketball and baseball. And Mom says that she'll get me baseball for my birthday. Ready? Are you ready? Yeah. Help 
up in here? No, thank you. Now, let's see. I'm up to 37 on this list. Um, the Powells. Is Hallie really still friendly with them? Well, they were here for dinner two months ago. I'll put them down. What is that? Oh, it's an invitation list to Hallie's birthday. Oh, yeah, we still have that big barbecue every year. Only this year I was afraid we were going to miss it. You are. Well, I don't understand what you mean. I mean, there's not going to be any party. He shouldn't even be home. The only reason he's here is because somebody has been feeding him so much bad news about what's been going on in this house that he signed himself out to come home and see if he could fix it. Joanne, I'm afraid I really don't understand what you mean by feeding him. Feeding him like a little bit of arsenic every day in his medicine. That's the craziest... Rita, go ahead and say it. It's all right. Crazy, huh? Cuckoo nuts. I'm not gonna go for a butcher knife. Joanne, please, now, don't get yourself worked up. I don't get myself worked up. Do you know that? You get me worked up. And she gets me worked up. And it's just a case of honest-to-God anger. And that happens to be a perfectly normal emotion. Joanne, we haven't done anything. Oh. Come on, Rita. Am I paranoid? Is that what it is? Well, around you, you know something? I need a little of that just to stay sane. You have been trying to kick the stool out from underneath my feet ever since I walked off of that bus. Joanne! And between the two of you and your little pipeline, how do you put him exactly where he shouldn't be? Excuse me, Mrs. Tilford, it is your presence here that has been the problem. Your problem, Louise. And her problem, and my problem, and Kathy's problem, but it never had to be Howdy's. I think I'll... I'll go see to Everett. Fine, you see to Everett, but Everett only. I don't want Howdy knowing anything about this. I mean it, Rita. I do not want Mr. Tilford having any excitement of any kind, including birthday parties, until you hear it directly from Dr. Quintero. What is that? It's a dinner tray for Mr. Tilford. I thought I would feed him first. But are you feeding him? Fried steak and fritters? It's his favorite. It's a special occasion. He's had a heart attack. You don't <gasps> feed him that. You call the doctor and find out exactly what he can eat. I don't have to hear any of this from you. I am trying very hard to control my temper because I appreciate the fact that you're ill. Crazy. I don't want to upset you any further. Well, upset me, Louise. Come on. Upset, upset me. afraid of me. Why? Why are you so scared? Is it the title? Is it, is it mentally ill? Is it me personally? Is it my temper? You know, I, I've never even had a temper before. I don't know where this is coming from. <sighs> Look, maybe it's your job. Do you suppose that's what it is? Are you so afraid that, that if I'm in, you're out, and my gosh, is a, is, is a roof over your head and a microwave oven so important to you that you would poison my own family against me just to keep it? Tell me, Louise, I want to know. Oh. And talk about mothers. That porcelain exterior of yours is really Don't you talk to me about mothers, what you did to those two babies. What I did, I did to me. You did to them. You took them out to that trailer, and when they were sleeping, you turned on that gas. I did not! Dr. Tilford came home, and he smelled the propane, and he woke me, and we got you out of there. That's a lie! I sure never even knew what happened. That's a lie! I couldn't have been. I was alone. I swear I was alone. I had to have been alone. No! It's true! I remember! It's true! <laughs>
better tell Mr. Telford that she might try and hurt herself again. Sean. Sure. Kathy, go tell your father. Go on. We shouldn't have told her. We promised Dad. Get your father. go to the trailer? I think so. Call Larry and tell him to get out here. Sorry. <laughs> He's over the worst of it. You know how tough he is. With every hour, the odds increase. He wants to see you. Oh, Sean, honey, wake up. Sean. Louise. 
please. Would you please take the children home and put them in bed? You know, you know all the time why I was so terrified to come home. I hope Bryn said you'd remember when you were ready to. It's a long wait. What I almost did to our kids and you were still willing to trust them to me. It wasn't you. Someone different. Just like I'm different from the man who hurt you so much. <laughs> I can't even begin to explain how much love I feel for you at this moment. <laughs> an update on the devastating drought in the south and take a look at the latest fall fashions from Paris tomorrow on the CBS Morning News.